Yeah, my name's G Herbo. I like nasty girls. I like classy. What's up, y'all? It's Anta Enjai with Tiger TV, and I'm here with G Herbo, aka Lil Herb, in the lair. How you doing? What's up? <laughs> so my first question yeah. for you is, what was Humble Beast for you? I know a lot of the songs, whether it was Street, Man Now, No Way Out, really illustrated a lot of the events that happened in your life that made you who you are. Uh, but we want to know what exactly was it for you. For listeners, it kind of came off as kind of like a diary. Yeah, kind of, kind of, sort of. Like, it could be, you could look at it, you could consider it a diary. It's, it's definitely a diary, and it's, um, I wanted my debut album to be something that was true to me, you know what I'm saying, that's 100% true to me and everything I am. So, like, those records, like you were saying, Street, Man Now, all those records, it's, it's, it's much big, they, they're, they're much bigger records, I feel like, than records that was on Walk in the Face of Land and Ball Like yeah. I'm Kobe, like my previous project. Um, it's just, you know what I'm saying, the, the music, it tells my story, you know what I'm saying, who I am, where I come from, and where I want to be on top of showing the growth where I could go back and look at those events and talk back on it, you know what I'm saying? So that's what my album was, like a diary. You, you actually hit it right on the head because it's me talking about who I am, where I come from, and being able to reflect on it saying, I don't want to live this way no more, or um, I think this way now, you know what I'm saying? So it, yeah. it is, you could consider the diary. I never heard, like you probably, just open my brain. Nah, because I rock with your music. And I kind of <laughs> want to disagree with you because for Welcome to Face on Land, write your name with... Hey, get the fuck out, Squee. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I want to kind of disagree with you because even though Welcome to Face on Land, write your name kind of alluded to the experiences that you've had on the streets yeah. of Chicago and what's but, put you in the position that you're in. Yeah, I mean, but I feel like the records on the album were, like, different from Write Your Name in a, in a certain way because Write Your Name was... It was... From a perspective of, I was still in the streets like every day while yeah. I was when I made that song. You okay. know, so it was from that perspective of me, you know what I'm saying, having situ or going being through situations, you know what I'm saying, while I lost people close to me. But it's from a perspective where I may have been trying to get a revenge, you know, revenge standpoint or speaking on it from it just happening, grieving still, you know. So I feel like the projects on my album are kind of reflective those yeah but they're more reflective you know what i'm saying than anything because i want to be able to still tell the youth i live this way but i'm and if i were you say for instance if i was the youth or talking from somebody perspective who hasn't lived my life i wouldn't you yeah. know if i was you i wouldn't live this life you know yeah. what i'm saying but if i had to go back in time i'll do it all over i'll yeah. do everything the same way but just speaking to the youth i want to sh 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 um just shine a, a different light on them, just basically telling them, you know what I'm saying, the things that I've been through, had I been you, I would have not wanted to go to it, go through it, you know what I'm saying? So if Absolutely. I wasn't forced to, into these situations and had to live, you know what I'm saying, the way I did, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have, cho I wouldn't have chose that life for myself. So. Absolutely. So just to piggyback off what you just said, for people who aren't from Chicago, it can be kind of difficult for them to understand how important it is to get out of an environment like that and to stay out of yeah. an environment like that. But your album is number 25 on Billboard 100, or is climbing now? 21. So, 21. So, I didn't mean to correct you. 21. Okay, no, you good. 21, <laughs> correct me. So, they, there are people beyond Chicago that are able to grasp your message. And my question is, how have you been able to channel your message in a way that so many people could feel you, particularly those people that don't have the ugly backgrounds that we have? I came up um, on 79. So I'm, I'm here with you. Like, yeah. so I'm saying for people that weren't, that don't have that, that background, that didn't have that coming up, how are you able to channel, channel your message in a way that people from all different types of backgrounds will be able to grasp? Um, just being uh, honest with myself, you Absolutely. know, it's real. So they able to, and no matter where you're from, people could vouch for it all over the world. They want to be a part of something or just know, like be aware, you know what I'm saying? So it don't matter if you never live this way, like certain people just want to hear our story and say oh man i don't want to have to do that or why they had to live like that you know so just to be able to speak from a perspective nobody ever had to you know what i'm saying understand or live and they still understand it like you don't understand it but you understand where i'm coming from you know what i'm saying like people don't understand why it's so much killing or they don't understand why the youth 90 percent of the youth is doing the killing because they don't really have do. no options. They don't have nothing else to do. They don't have no jobs. They mama don't have no jobs. They fathers don't have no jobs. So they really left with the streets. You know what I'm saying? They got to survive and adapt to exactly what's in front of them. So 
just, you know, me being in the midst of it all my life and being able to, you know, come, uh, you know, rise above it, thank God, and, and speak back on it. I feel like people should be able to relate to it because I'm telling the story. I'm not glorifying it, you know what I'm saying? I'm not telling people go out and do this, go out, shoot guns and nothing like that. You know, I'm just talking about the life that I had to live. I, if, I feel like if I wouldn't have had a gun on me at certain times, I would be dead. I wouldn't even be able to tell the story, you know, so just being able to understand that. You're not going to let nobody kill you. Somebody from the suburbs, a white person that never game bang in their life, you're going to pick up a gun if you feel like your life is in danger, you know what I'm saying? So you understand, it, you know, no matter what situation has got you to that point of picking up a gun, once you pick it up, you just defending your life at that point. Absolutely. So to that point, what would you say to your 15-year-old self? So as you said, when you wrote, oh, when, when you did Welcome to Phase Online, you said <laughs> you was writing that, but Shit, oh, 15, actually 15-year-old Herb is gangway Herb. Yeah. So around that time and even into Welcome to Phase Online, what would yourself now, the one that's sitting on this couch, right. Yeah, you absolutely them. right. Like that 15 year old, that one, I dropped off in the face when I was like 17, yeah. 18. So. so, Gangway, what would you um, say to that person? Man, uh, I just, I probably would tell myself at 15, man, that life is about sacrifice, maybe. Like, it's so much that I didn't understand that I'll probably be, I wouldn't say I'd be a lot. Better off in life because I probably wouldn't have been able to deal with some of the obstacles or some of the things that I would have that would have been coming my way at 15 just from having a, a, a 15 year old brain. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like everything happened for a reason. But if I could talk to myself at 15, I probably would tell myself, um, just follow your first man. Probably, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of a lot of stuff that I went through early on, I didn't really understand that was it was inevitable, like life. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If you putting forth this en this energy this way, you gonna get these outcomes. You know what I'm saying? If you putting your focus into one thing, I feel like the outcomes that you know what I'm saying you get is gonna be a product of you putting your focus in that. Like I feel like life is cause and effect. You know what I'm saying? It's about cause and effect. So I probably would have just told myself that you know what i'm saying the things that that you go through like aren't a coincidence it's a product of you know what i'm saying you live in a certain way or thinking a certain way like i feel like life is in general is just about principles and morals like you could be a killer you could be in the streets but when you put a lot of negativity out into the world you're gonna get negativity back you know what i'm saying you could live a certain way you could be from the streets and just live by morals and principles and still you know what i'm saying get Absolutely. blessings you know so I just feel like uh, if I would have understood that early on, I probably would have been smarter now. I don't think my life would have been too much differently because everything happened for a reason. Like, had I got millions or whatever at that age, I probably would have lost it or probably would have went to jail for, you know what I'm saying, just having too much exposure to so much stuff. So I probably would have just told myself that nothing, different, nothing else, though. Okay. So now I want to add.